Let's talk now with retired Major General Paul D. Eaton and retired Brigadier General Stephen M. Anderson, who are sounding the alarm on extremism in the military and what it might mean in 2024. Uh, the both of you wrote uh, an op-ed along with another colleague of yours, and you said, in short, we are chilled to our bones at the thought of a coup succeeding. Uh, General Eaton, how likely do you think it is that we will see another coup attempt in, in the immediate future? Well, Brianna, thank you. Uh, January 6th was uh, not a one-off. Uh, we are going to see it again. The people who perpetrated that attempt on uh, America's democracy have uh, gone to school and they are learning from their mistakes and they are going to implement a uh, somewhat more uh, reasoned from their perspective approach to uh, try to do it again in 2024 and we really uh, do need to get ready for it. General Anderson, I, I know you share some of that urgency and I wonder if you think the military is doing enough to counter this in the ranks. We should note that it was mostly veterans who were involved but there were uh, active duty or National Guard members who, who participated. Yes, absolutely. I mean, over 100 military uh, members or former military members were part were have been charged with crimes with the insurrection. And of course, Stuart Rhodes and the Oath Keepers, most of them had military backgrounds as well. And then, of course, you look at people like Lieutenant General Mike Flynn, with whom I served in in Iraq, who who is advocating essentially using military to overthrow uh, the government. But I mean, I'm very, very concerned. And Paul is as well about uh, extremism and the impact of extremism on our military. Uh, DOD, uh, Department of uh, Defense, recently passed some, some policy that prohibits active membership in extremist groups, um, in, in hate groups. Uh, the FBI has a list of gangs and extremist groups, uh, but, but the policy allows them to be members, uh, and we don't think that's good enough. Uh, they can't be members at all, active or not. I mean, you cannot have a platoon sergeant that's a member of the KKK. Uh, imagine the impact on morale and cohesion within the unit. Um, membership in extremist groups by members of the military uh, tend to essentially legitimize those organizations. And I, I wanna remind you, Brianna, that serving in the military is a profound privilege. I'm sure that Paul would agree with me. The greatest privilege of our life was serving in the military. But the, you do not get to join the military and also be a member of an extremist group. And if you can't make that choice, then the military isn't for you. So the military, the, the military needs to pass policy that essentially prohibits any type of membership at all in extremist groups. Okay, General Eaton, can you tell us a little bit more about what the military needs to do to make that kind of membership less appealing to its members? Brianna, every squad leader knows exactly who his uh, nine-man squad is, and uh, he will know in a very intimate manner what they think, what they do, who they do it with, and it is that kind of situational awareness on the part of the chain of command that will help solve the problem. We need to give the chain of command tools to, uh, to do that. With the proliferation of uh, social media, uh, we have opportunities to monitor what uh, the men and women of the armed forces are doing. It is uh, a requirement that uh, that we assist the chain of command so that we ferret out those Steve described as uh, members who do not belong in the armed forces, who do not have the privilege to serve in the armed forces of the United States. Okay, so so let's say General Anderson, they they are ferreted out. Now you have highly trained individuals who are disaffected, out of the military, military, Oath Keepers and other militias, would love to have people with this kind of training. What then do you do to prevent that? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, we need to essentially uh, imagine those kind of eventualities. Uh, you know, one of the things that we need to do in the military is strategic planning and wargaming, something we're extremely good at. Um, and we need to imagine the unimaginable. Imagine what happens if we get people like Stuart Rhodes out there and creating havoc. What are the things that they're thinking about right now to make themselves more successful in 2024 than they were in 2020? We need to imagine the uh, unimaginable. We also need to gather intelligence on these people. Even They may get out of the military, but we, there's no reason why we can't continue to track them and monitor them. And we need to identify potential mutineers, both in ranks and out of ranks, you know, uh, as quickly as possible. 
And of course, we need to educate our troops. I mean, it's a great opportunity for us to have military members in within our ranks, teaching them what Civics 101 is, teaching them how great and beautiful our democracy is, how it's supposed to work, how it does work, how our elections are conduct conducted, the, the innate uh, integrity of our elections. Stop listening to the pillow guy and start paying attention to where our democracy really is. I think we could all use a little brush up sometimes on our civics. Uh, Generals Eaton and Anderson, thank you for being with us this evening and also thank you for your continued service. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, thank Brianna, you, for doing this.